listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. So um, going back to something you said earlier, um, what is your theory as to why so many wonderful black women are so single? Um, I don't have a theory. If I had an actual theory, I wouldn't be single. <laughs> uh, I do think that a part of it comes from, and I can only speak for me, I think that once you get to a certain age and you have a certain amount of degrees or um, titles that it becomes, you become intimidating to men. <laughs> like you just become intimidating to them because especially if like in my situation, like I don't have any kids, I've never married, never been divorced, you know, none of that stuff. So, and I, and I have the degrees and I have businesses like, and I, I do this and that, like that can be intimidating because if I met someone who, when I meet men who intimidate me, it's because they have like this, 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 you know, like all these things. So I think that that is a big part because now like black women are some of the most educated women and we're out here getting degrees and getting this and getting that. And we're being independent and we have our own, like we're not trying to wait for necessarily a man at this point in life. I, and I can only say that for like thirties and up because that's where I'm at. Um, but yeah, and I think that it doesn't become a big deal that you're single until after you hit 30 as a black female. So let's dig deeper. Okay. Cause I think, I think we can, I think we can go further than it's because men are intimidated of me. I think there's more there. Well, yeah, I, mean, I think that's a big part of it though. It's okay. Intimidation factor. Okay, so tell me more. Um, I think besides the intimidation factor, um, I think it's also, it seems like black men want things that black women aren't willing to do. Like, like I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to just like cater to your world. Like I need you to be a part of my world too. You know, I expect you to have your shit together too. Like, you know, it's just like, I think that there are expectations that black men feel that black women have that are too high like standard wise. And I don't think that I'm not saying that everyone's standards aren't high. Like I have high standards. And so I get it like that disqualifies people in my mind. So, you know, it is what it is, but I do think that that plays a part in it that, or black men are just like, nah, she just, she thinks she this, or she thinks she that, or I want me a bad bitch just out here with like, I, maybe I'm not going to be out here with my ass out. <laughs> like, you know, maybe that's not going to be me. Like, maybe I'm going to want you home on the weekend <laughs> every other time, you know, like. So I think part of the reason we're, we're missing each other is um, I think your idea of a black man is different than mine. Well, of course, because you're a black man. Yeah, exactly. Black woman. Yeah. But but because of that, like um, there might be certain things I say about black women and you're like, who are you talking about? And then there might be certain things you say about black men. I'm like, who are you talking about? Yeah. So let, let's do this. In as much detail as you can, describe your ideal black man. All right. My ideal black man. Okay. Uh, I would like someone who is financially stable, who is emotionally mature and is able to communicate on a adult level with me. Um, someone who is responsible, who is driven and passionate in whatever they're doing. So whether it's in your nine to five job, or if you are a hustler and you're out here as a creative or as an entrepreneur, like you got to be doing something like you got to be doing something like we're not sitting here just hoping and wishing. Um, I want someone who is able to like truly romance me, like take me on the dates and buy me sweet things and text me in the middle of the day and call me at night. Um, you know, let's go on trips. I want someone that's going to be adventurous and who is 
a dreamer. Like I need someone who can dream too, because I'm a creative and I'm a creative mind and I can't be with someone who is just satisfied at just existing. Like I need you to have some passion in your life. Um, my ideal man also is super family oriented, like loves family, not a mama's boy. Um, I need you to be with me. I need you to know like, hey, it's, it's here, you know, but I want you to love your family. And if you have children, take care of your kids, be taking care of your kids. Like if you got a kid, you need to be taking care of it. If we're together, like that's something that I need. I would prefer someone not to have a child so that we can start a family together. But that's very unlikely right now. <laughs> it's hard to find men that don't have kids that are 30 plus. Um, they're out there, but I haven't seen tons of them. Um, yeah, I think I also want someone that's like spiritual. Like you got to have, I'm not saying you need to be fire baptized like in the church every single Sunday, but you need to have a relationship with God and we need to be able to connect on a spiritual level because I'm a spiritual being. And I love God and I love talking about the universe and like, I just love it. Like, love okay, it. so yeah. let's assume that man exists. Okay. okay, yeah, he's out there somewhere. He's out there somewhere. Where now, you at? Where you at? <laughs> now, uh, another thought experiment. Yeah. Describe in as much detail as you can mm -hmm. that hypothetical man's ideal woman. Yeah, so I think it's the same thing. She needs to have her shit together. Like, you need to have your own. You need to be self-sufficient, like taking care of your own stuff, like living by yourself, um, have a job. Be if, if I'm asking you to be um, loving, then I need to be that way too. Like I need to be just as much wanting to cater to you. So calling you, texting you, planning the, the dates and the trips too. Like I think um, someone that, I think that guy is also going to be wanting someone who is stylish and who wants to be out on the scene with him when he's out there. I think also the female that's able to be emotionally mature to the point of saying, if you with your dues, you with your dues. Like not, hey, what you doing every five minutes? <laughs> you know, I need it like I need to be that female. Yeah, so explain to me what the difference because you're you're literally saying he wants a female version of himself. So what are the differences though? Are there any differences? Or you think that type of man would want just a female version of himself? I think that he would want a few. I mean, honestly, I think that, no, I mean, I feel like a, that, that sort of man who is that focused and driven and passionate and about his business, business is going to want a partner. Like That's the same way? Not necessarily the same, but has the same qualities and the mindset. I think it's about mindset. I think... You know, maybe she doesn't have her own business, but she is sure as hell putting in time at her job and doing what she needs to do. So let me ask you this. Do you know men like that? Yeah, I do. And what type of women do they idealize? <laughs> is it what you described or is it different? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, what is it? I mean, uh, I don't know if it's... I honestly probably haven't asked them enough. You should. I really should. Because uh, you're very wrong. <laughs> what? You're the, very wrong. Uh, what kind of woman they want? Yes. What kind of woman do they want then? Men don't want a female version of themselves. What do y'all want? That's competition. We want to compliment. It, see, and I think that's the problem. Like, why is that competition? That should not, someone who is as equally as driven as you, that should never be competition. The, the, let, let me give you an um, analogy. If I'm a point guard and we have the next draft pick, I'm a point guard for the Lakers, and we have the next draft pick, I'm not looking for point guards. I need a center. I need a small forward, I need a power forward, I need a shooting guard, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that we both play basketball, but we have different roles, responsibilities, different assignments. We need to be at different places on the court. But if I ask for another point guard, and for instance, try to make them play um, center, we're gonna have a problem. Because when it's time to bring the ball up the court, I want to bring the ball up the court. And that's partly why some relationships fail, because you have two point guards, two leaders, two heads. 
Yeah, no, I don't think that's why two relationships. I don't think that's why a lot of relationships fail. Okay, why do you think a lot of relationships fail? It's, a lot of black relationships fail. Is that it's not about having two leaders because as a leader, you also a good leader is also a good follower. That sounds good. It is good. I mean, if I'm going to lead, I need to be able to support you too. So I'm not saying that my ideal man, that we're both like, oh, I'm going to pay for this and I'm going to pay. No, it's like, okay, when it is your time to flex and like you have your lane, like I allow you to be as masculine as you want to be and I be as feminine as I am. But in my femininity, I am still a leader in that. Like I still manage my household. I still work my job. I still do my shit. Like there's nothing wrong with that. I think that the reason that relationships do not work I mean, mine is that <sighs> there is an honesty, like the communication is off. Like you've got two people who are on two different pages. They come together for I attraction. Agree. I agree. Yeah. Like, oh, you fine. I'm fine. Like, let's, it's going, you know, that's like, it's, it's not like it's surface. So then when it comes time for you guys to actually get down to the nitty gritty of what makes a relationship work, when it comes time to people to be able to give and be flexible, like nobody's trying to give <laughs> like that, there's no compromise in there. There's no, okay, you take lead and I'm a follow. And then you take lead and I'm a follow and this is your strength. So be strong in it. Oh, you better at this than be better at this. I think it is so much of it. It just like, there's no real communication because you're not real with each other. Like that's not, you're not coming on the pretenses of let's be real. Let me get to know you is Oh, you fine. Let's fuck. <laughs> you know, like, oh, let's be together because we're going to look good. We're going to be able to, to be fly to get like. It's a lot of childish. Yeah, it's not real. Like when you think of a relationship, I think what makes good relationships work is the ability to be fluent and to be strong in the things that you are strong in and to allow that other person to be strong and great in the things that they are great in. Like I can't be overstepping where you at if you were if you say hey i'm i'm the man I'm, i want to take care of the home or do whatever cool let me let you do that but i still want to feel empowered in my own home to make decisions a lot of men are going to hear that and uh see red flags I'll, okay. I'll try to explain that, but why that, do you think that is? Before I try. What? The red flags on what? What you just said. Like, why do you think men would see that and be like, ah. That what? But what part? What, what the, did I say that the, was a red flag? I should want to, I should also be a leader and I should also be able to put my foot down and make decisions and stuff like that. Why do you think some men would see that as a red flag? Some black men. Well, if you see a red flag in your woman saying, hey, I want to have a voice in the decisions that we're making no, no, in our not, house. Not, not your woman, like a woman. Like, let's say it's a first date. Somebody just met and she's talking about um, kind of like how you describe the ideal guy and then his ideal woman being essentially the same person. Why do you think most guys wouldn't want that? Hypothetically. Ego. I mean, of course not. Like, it's just I, I really feel like it's a, bit, a bunch of ego. Um, you want to be the man, you want to, you want to be the head, the, this, the, that, the, all that. And that's great. Like as a female, like, I want you to be that for me personally, I want you to be the man, like that is your job, but it is also our job. It, like for me, a relationship is partnership. And so there's a level of respect that has to come in that partnership. So if there's a red flag with me saying, like, I want to make decisions in this household, too, like, then we have an issue on your idea of what partnership is, because I'm not subordinate to you. Like, you don't rule over me. We rule together. It is a household together. And I understand I'm a Christian. I understand, like, the man is supposed to rule the household and the woman is supposed to come underneath there or whatever. I get it. But there is. But what you're saying mutuality. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. I guess it's contrary to say that he is going to rule over me. But I also think if you read the Bible, it talks about how men are supposed to also entreat their women as the bride of Christ and as a counterpart. And like God says, it's not good for man to be alone. 
Therefore, he created woman. Therefore, so they could be together. I think that there are certain roles that exist for a man to do, like the provider sense. Like a man, that's that's your role. Like be the provider. So as a provider, of course, you cover the household. You are the covering of the household. You are the head of the household. As me, as a as the nurturer, I provide for the inner workings of the household. Well, then let me work the inner workings. Sure, of the household. sure. You know, like I, I think I think when um, it becomes a problem is like if a man says, for instance, and we're trying to make a decision, and a man says. And that's final. Okay. Does that, does it end there? <laughs> it depends on what it is. Anything. Not he just anything. says that's final. This, does it end this, there? Well, has he allowed me to? Yeah, you've had conversations and, and he's, he's making an executive decision. He said that's final. Do you say, yes, sir, you got it? Or what happens in that scenario? In, in a black household, what, what happens? Um... Of what currently happens or what I would want in my house. Give me both. Um, what currently happens is, I think it, one, it depends, it, it always depends on the context and what, what the subject is about because it's never black and white. I think when it becomes like, I'm the only one and this is my decision, that's when you have issues because then you start to negate the other person. Because just because you say that's final, that may not be the best decision. And I get like, yeah, so I think it depends. Um, I think now what you're going to see is a bunch of pushback. Because black women are so tired of black men being like, well, I'm what I say is it. And you have to submit to me because that's what the Bible says. But then you don't read the rest of the Bible where it talks about how men should treat women and how men should treat their wives. You know, and so... What I personally would want is it never to be like an executive decision on one person. I think that we decide. And if it is a point where you make a final decision, I say, okay, it's because I really feel like one, either go on. I know you're wrong, but you're going to need this so you can understand that I'm right. <laughs> you go come back later because it does happen and more than likely it will. But then, too, even if that doesn't happen and you do make that executive decision, it's not from a place of I'm making this as, you know, like, forget what you say. Like, this is our decision and that's it. Like, it, it's always going to be in love. It's going to have to be out of what is best. So you don't believe in executive decisions. You don't believe there's any time where the man should put his foot down and say, that's final. I do. I mean, sure, you can make an executive decision. I, I do, do I always think that it's going to be the best decision? No, depending on the situation, I don't always think it will always be the best decision. No, no, but that's not the point. The point is, who does the buck stop with? Who, who gets to decide what the best decision is? We get to decide. Mm, that's interesting. Like, for my relationship, it's about, it's it's got to be we. Now, if this comes down to... Let's say, let's use an actual example that I can think of. So say it's, I don't know, where we're going to, I don't know, making a decision about, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a decision that I well, Okay, let me ask you this. The kind and caliber of man that you described because I'm assuming that man is going to be relatively successful. He's going to be relatively powerful, whether physically, uh, from a community standpoint, from an intellectual standpoint, right? Mm -hmm. Because most women want to look up to their man. Do you think he is going to be okay with his authority constantly being challenged? One, it won't be challenged. It's not, I don't think... I think that if it is viewed as me challenging your authority, then there is always going to be an issue. I think if it is viewed as... So why would he choose that type of woman is my question. What do you mean? The type of woman where he might worry that she's a challenging his authority. I don't think he would. That's the thing. So like, that, that conversation wouldn't happen because he wouldn't choose somebody similar to him. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. <laughs> I, but you get what I'm saying? 
I do and I don't. Like, I think that you, when I say that, when I describe my ideal man and you ask me what kind of woman he would think is his ideal woman, and I say that he would want the female version of himself, I see that as two sides of the same coin. That, like, you're going to want someone that is as equally invested as you and that is able to ebb and flow with you. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be always she's challenging my authority by what she's saying. It's we are, we are both weighing in on this and we are going to make a decision. Like I just, I can't put it any other way because I can't, I'm not saying that there's never a time that he's going to say, this is what I, I think, this is what we're going to do. And I'm going to say, okay, that's cool. Like, we're going to do it, like, out of love, because I think that's also a part of love and being in a successful relationship is sometimes learning how to be quiet and just go with it. So, I mean, I I agree with that. I think um, part of the reason certain relationships don't work is because as a society, we view power in a myopic sense. We view it the same way. And we view power as a masculine thing. And I think the mistake we make is not understanding that power is also feminine. And I would, I would, I would say that feminine power is actually more powerful than masculine power because it relies on persuasion. uh, Instead of, um, instead of belligerence and combativeness. I think we fail a lot of times because when your husband, for instance, says that decision is final, I'm putting my foot down. The wife usually meets that with, how do you know that's the right choice? Masculine energy, as opposed to, okay, babe. And then at night, she whispers in the ear, can we talk a little bit more about it? And be, be more sweet and more subtle. Because what's interesting is, and I say it all the time, our community wasn't designed to pair. We're not raising our children to be husbands and wives. And that's why when we ask each other some of these questions, we don't have clear answers. And we're not curious enough to to figure out the truth because like you've mentioned before, a lot of us already have preconceived notions that we're unwilling to divorce ourselves of. So I I, I understand how men think. Mm -hmm. So this man in front of me, fuck what he got to say. (laughs) I already get it, right? Regardless of if my life shows that I get it. So... To spin it to you, what um, what are you unsure about with men? Like when it comes to that scenario, what are you curious about? Which scenario? The scenario of putting his foot down and what I say is final. What are you curious about? And try your best not to be condescending. <laughs> I'm curious to know if when I say this is not my decision, if he's going to also be as willing to be quiet and go along with it. No. But, but he, he should. should. Why? You said he was, you said that the man, and you also brought a biblical text, mm-hmm. which reinforces the idea. And I'm not a huge fan of certain parts of biblical text, but it reinforces the idea. It's pretty consistent about it that a woman is essentially a man's property. And what he says goes. And that she has Whoa. no say. <laughs> Whoa, 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 you must not read the Bible. Let's fully. talk about it. Like, you just you you must not read the Bible fully because you what you are speaking of is a scripture of the Bible. And if you continue reading that same chapter, the next verse, it talks exactly how a man should entreat his wife. Treat, but not entreat. Entreat. His entreat. Wife. Okay, yes. explain that to me. I'm sorry. How he should how he should um, how he should also deal with respond to cover I really like want to go to the scripture go ahead like, you got it. Let's do this. Yeah. okay let's do it. I really feel like this is like my angst with the whole church and I've grown up in the church my whole life and 
the scripture, husbands and wives, 